you might lose interest in you know whatever you're reading but what storytelling does is that it disconnect it connects us back to the disconnection of the world so when people are disconnected storytelling brings them brings them back right and that's why i tell stories i want people to feel it i want people to be able to connect to those disconnection right stories that people don't get to tell and stories that people don't get to hear and that's why storytelling is important it connects us back to reality it connects us back to like a vision and this is why you, do, you tell stories, right? You want people to get to know what are your ideas, what do you stand for? So if you want to communicate what you stand for and your ideas, it's true stories most times, basically. I mean, um, you would see that most times people would, I mean, you can, people would connect more to a story that they hear, right? I mean, statistics will always be statistics. Numbers will always be numbers, but stories, actually bring reality to, to things. It brings realities to numbers. You know, you can tell somebody, oh, I've done 3,500. I just, you know, empowered one person. I just empowered two person. But when you tell the story of a company or an organization, people are able to connect to that story, right? And that's why sometimes you might, um, uh, the reason why people give money is not because uh, they want to give the money is because they're able to connect to a particular story. They're able to connect to a particular idea. They're able to connect to a particular ideal. And why social media today? I mean, obviously, when you look at social media, um, I was telling somebody recently that social media is an extension of real life, that you can't even escape social media these days. Like, you can't run away from it. You can't, there's no way we can, I mean, millions and millions of people currently on social media. And if you say, oh, I don't want to tell my story, I don't want to put something on social media, or there's someone, a village person who is going to you know, do something, you might be losing out from opportunities. I'll tell you that some of the opportunities that I've gotten today, basically many of them happen through social media. Let me give an instance before I deep dive into like the main topic. So in 2018, I want to speak on a radio station. Like I want to get into radio, get into TV, you know, just had an opportunity to put my work out there and everything. And I'm like, and I went on social media. So I had every single person that I knew that were working in a radio station. I was just adding them on LinkedIn, basically. So one day I shared a story, then I would tag them. I will just put them in between that post that I've shared. So... And before you know, I, I shared one story one day I was going to South Africa for an SDG program. So I shared a story that got me to the program and everything. And I shared and I tagged a radio station. Within five minutes, the presenter of that program called, messaged me on LinkedIn. And I said, it worked, <laughs> right? And I got my first uh, you know, show on social media, uh, on, um, on radio. And I was invited not just once, twice, thrice, and I've been there a couple of times, right? The person was even telling me that whenever I return back to Nigeria, she would love to have me back on the show as well. And how did that happen? It's by telling stories on social media. So if I wait for village people, like, oh, village people will do me if I post my story there, if I, you know, post things that I'm doing there, I might probably not get some certain opportunities. So we can avoid social media. Humans are the ones that are on social media. And humans, we always connect with stories. So if you fail not to share, you might be failing not to get the opportunities that you want or you desire. So why is storytelling important in organization and personal development or personal branding? I mean, for, for example, when you, you, know, you look at all the big organizations in the world today, they, you, they do stories. They tell stories of the organization, they leverage social media. And because, again, because stories connect with the part of the brain that doesn't appeal to logic but that appeals to emotion, right? People can just look at it and like, they listen to this story and they are just, you know, inspired to want to help, inspired to want to support or inspired to want to communicate the stories to other people, right? So um, um, when, when organizations tell their stories, what it does is that it helps them build credibility. People can remember those stories. If you look at it, for example, remember, um, um, I, I for, uh, is it only well noodles? There was a time, that they were doing bambalala in Nigeria, bambalala. And you look at everybody's, you know, reciting bambalala then. It's a story. They are telling stories. It's important, right? Every organization would always leverage stories to communicate their values, to communicate their ideal to the public. Now, after looking at the why, the key question, um, I would quickly deep dive into the golden circle, which, um, I mean, Simon Sinek actually did justice to this. You can watch his TED Talk, Starts With Why. 
And the truth is that leadership is inside out, right? What we do when we want to communicate our vision, it's from the inside out. So most times, you know, companies have what they do, they have all the strategies, they have every single thing, every single thing that they do. Even we, as an individual, we have what we, what we do personally, right? So I, I work with um, Refugee Education UK. I'm the founder of Kayodia Labibash Pan Career Initiative. That is what I do, right? Oh, we run programs. So we organize a boot camp where children in rural communities come together to co-create solutions. That is how we do, how I do what I do. But what is the why? And what I do and how we never connect to people. People will not just connect because I say that, oh, I co-create solutions for children in rural communities. Oh, fine, that's great. Many people do that. Oh, oh, what do you do? I'm the founder of Kaya Oh, many people run initiative as well. Fine, that's okay, that's good. But why do I do what I do is what people connect to. And it's why people will call you or people will support your cause or people will raise up their hands and say, I want to be part of your organization or I want to be part of your why or I want to call you to share your story to come, you know, I want to invite you for an opportunity. And one of the ways we can tell that story is leveraging our platform social media. It's, 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 it's an opportunity for us to constantly connect or uh, to constantly tell the stories of our why. So for me, if you see me on my social media, basically, if I'm telling my story, I'm actually telling the story of my why just to let people know that this is where I'm coming from. This is my journey. This is my story. This is my experience. This is the reason why I'm doing the work that I'm doing today. So if I founded Career Leadership and Career Initiative, it's born out of my own experience of being raised in Makoko, right? Not having access to the right education or opportunities or skills. You know, and how I lost my mom at seven and my dad became unemployed at the same time. And I see my brother staying out of school for a whole academic year. And I was there for a whole academic session, not being able to like, you know, for a whole academic time, not being able to go to school and having to raise money to go to school, right? But I don't want other children to go through the struggle that I'm going through. And education changed my circumstances. And I want education to help other children also change their circumstances as well. Because with education, they're able to transform themselves, transform their family, transform their communities. They're able to, you know, to, 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 to reduce the, the, the transfer of poverty from one generation to another by giving them access to education. Because I've been able to do that with access to education. So if I'm telling this story, right, if I'm going to social media to actually share this story shamelessly, people will connect to the why that this is the reason why this guy do what he does. And I'm interested, you know, and then people start owning their story in your story. People start connecting those stories with the brand to so say that I can find my story in, 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 in this person's story. I can find my vision in this person's vision. I mean, not everybody will be visionaries. Sometimes we'll own our vision in other people's vision. We'll own our why in other people's why. And it's by telling that, constantly telling that story, that's how you can, you know, you can own your why in other people's why. That's how people can raise up their hands to say that I'm ready to die for this person and I want to work for this person and I'm ready to give my blood and sweat and tears to this person. And people will not just naturally just give you money or donate or support you. It's until you tell the story of who you are, your why, why you do what you do. I mean, what can, I mean, if you're telling what you do, it's, it's, sometimes it seems you're bragging. And there's a difference between, I mean, somebody said something, I saw something recently, storytelling is not self-promotion. You know, storytelling is communicating our why. Um, um, so, yeah, I mean, I know you must have seen these quotes. Uh, I mean, I posted these quotes, right? Uh, when I was, uh, I mean, uh, when I was uh, talking about attending this session and it's like, I have done a lot of work in the development space, but I came to learn about the opportunities in late 2016. I also started my nonprofit in 2017 and visibility was a concern. I could not get anyone to publish me, so I decided to publish myself. People had punched the nations to publish their work. I had social media. Um, you know, I wanted to like get known. I want people to share my story, but no one, no one could help me. I could not even contact anybody. The only thing I had at my disposal, or at my disposal rather, is social media. And I took the best of it. Like I'm like, I don't know anyone. There's nothing I can do. I have to use social media. So it was an opportunity for me to tell those stories that have not 
that I didn't tell, it was an opportunity for me to rewrite the narrative. It was an opportunity for me to um, reintroduce myself to the world, that this is who I am, this is what I do, right? This is what I stand for. And because of the stories that I tell, that's why people invite me to things. Or that's why I get some certain opportunities, whether paid or unpaid, or you know, people just mentioning my name somewhere. Because I constantly reintroduce myself. And if you don't tell your story, other people will tell it for you. Right? And people will make narratives different, totally different from who you are. So you have to shape the narrative. You have to tell those stories. I mean, I could recall when I was 15, I was teaching in the basic education school. Then I don't even have access to social media. Or I don't even have access to phones. I was teaching children in Igbubu community in Ikorodu, 15 years old. 14 years, I was advocating for HIV and AIDS when I went for a program that um, MTN Foundation organized. Didn't know whether social media exist, existed or, or not. Joined the Nigerian Red Cross when I was in the uni, and I always volunteer with the Nigerian Red Cross, go to motherless babies home, do all those things. I didn't know social media exists, and I will not share. I have those photos. I don't share anything, even in my NYC, that I was running community projects. I wouldn't share. But when I came to know about social media, that it's an opportunity to communicate my why, I started reintroducing myself to the world and telling my story, right? And that's how people can get you, you know, you know, you know, if people fail to publish you, publish yourself, right? Um, um, so uh, again, um, um, you might be asking that, oh, this guy has been talking about, you know, storytelling, storytelling, but how can we even tell these stories, right? I mean, it's the question, how? Can we tell the story? So a good public story is drawn from the series of choice points that have structured the plot of your life. The challenges you faced, the choices you made, and the outcomes you experienced. So these are like one of the structures of, of telling stories. So when, when you look at telling stories, and in Masha Gans, this is created by Masha Gans. So first is you, you need to look at what, what's, my, what's the challenge? Why did you feel it was a challenge? What was so challenging about it? And why was it your challenge? So what challenge did you face? For example, in my own story, the challenge I faced was actually growing up in the slum, Makoko, losing my mom at seven, you know, staying out of school, you know, having to work in the streets. These are the challenges I faced. These are stories that are personal to me. These are the challenge. But despite facing all of those challenges, I made some choices, right? So this is how you communicate the story. You communicate a challenge, right? And then you, you made some choices as a result of those challenge. And the choices I made was, I had choice. I could probably, you know, you know I have so many friends in Makoko today and in Bariga that they are dead from, 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 from as a result of, you know, cautious attack or cautious, you know, basically. But I had the choice, even growing up in those communities to teach. Started teaching in a basic rural school you know, in, in Ibubu Ikurudu, that was a choice. So if I'm telling my story, I tell the story from that connection of the challenge to the choice that I made as a result of that challenge. Maybe it's an organization, maybe it's a brand that, you know, is so personal to you that you want to tell. So what are the choices that you made? Another choice that I made was, you know, actually volunteering, helping, precocious, helping less precocious students in my school. I was doing free tutorials from 100 level to 400 level. I was teaching for free. Those were the choices that I made. Again, starting an organization that actually help children who have similar circumstances as mine to change their circumstances. These were the choices that I was making, right? So what, what's your challenge? So some people will tell me, oh, I don't have a story. Yeah, it doesn't have to be a sad story. You know, I mean, you could come from a rich family and still face challenges, right? I mean, you could, you could face challenges. It could even be in the on the dining table, for example. Let's take, for example, someone on the, on, on, in the dining table that, uh, you know, a, a guy has to be served first before the girl, you know, uh, people, you know, give, you know, um, more respect to, to, a, to a boy child. And, you know, you saw that happening within your, your family system. And these are things that, you know, led to some certain choices that you started making. That could be a storyline, right? I mean, Again, um, it doesn't have to follow these formats, right? But we need to think about why is it your challenge? You know, why is it so personal to you? Is it something you've seen? Is it something you've observed? You know, that made you to make some certain choices. How did you feel when you made that choice? How did you feel, you know, when, 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 when you started something, make a decision to change the life of somebody or to start something that would revolutionize, revolutionize business? 
And what were the outcome? So people want to know. People don't just want to know about the challenge you faced. People don't also want to know about the choices you made. But people want to know also, what are the outcome? How did the outcome feel? Why did it feel that way? What did it teach you? What do you want to teach us? How do you want us to feel? Right? So for me, I'm like, oh, the, because of these choices I made, these were the opportunities I got. Studied in one of the best universities in the world, University of Edinburgh. Because I did this and this, I got this opportunity, right? That would be one. I got to lead the regional work with Peace First in Sub-Saharan Africa. You know, that could be one outcome. Right? And people can read those stories and be inspired that someday I can be that person. And that's how people invite you to the room, basically. So I used to tell somebody, I don't want to be an inspirational speaker. I want to be an inspiration. And naturally, when you're an inspiration, people would invite you to rooms to share your story, to talk about your story. Martin Luther King, Nancy Mandela, they were great speakers, but they were inspiration. They changed the course of, of something. And they were also great storytellers as well. Right? And the reason why people would connect with story, I mean, um, 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 the, the I have a dream speech, uh, it, it, it's, it's more of a storyline. It's no, more of a why, right? So it's very, very important that we, we, we please, if I'm, uh, please just let me know when I'm about to like go overboard because I have a lot here. Um, 25 minutes might not be enough to like, you know, talk about storytelling, but I would just like quickly, like, I mean, uh, probably, uh, I, I mean, I would, I would probably end this the moment um, I get time, time off, basically. Um, you, may, you may think that your story doesn't matter. I think this is something I want to read, and it's a quote. You may think that your story doesn't matter, that people aren't interested, that you shouldn't be talking about yourself. But when you do public work, you have a responsibility to offer a public account of who you are, why you do what you do, and where you hope to lead. The thing about it is that if you don't author your public story, others will, and they may not tell it in the way you like, as many recent examples show. So if you don't tell your story, nobody would, would, would help you. And people would, you know, they would, they would tell the story the way, the way they want and the way they like. And there, there are also three, this, this is also like another pathway to, to telling your story, the story of self, the story of us. Like, again, it shouldn't be your story, right? You could tell stories of other people as well, right? I mean, like I do that a lot. Like I tell stories of others. Like I'm, I'm able to communicate those stories. I'm able to communicate the story of other people. Why, you know, that is you know, that, that revolves around my why, right? So again, when it comes to story of self, it's more of like why were you called to what you have been called to, right? That's the story of self, and the story of us is like a communal kind of story. You know, how do you weave those stories together? And the story of now is what do you aspire for, right? In the future, what's your ideal world? Where are you going to? Right, Apple would constantly tell you, this is where we are going to. You know, we want individuals to be able to, you know, um, um, I, I mean, Microsoft rather, we want individuals to be able to compete against Big Brother. That's why, that's why people had phones. That's why people had personal computers. And this is the story they were telling. So that individual have access to computers, not corporations would have the power. Individuals also have the power to do things. And you could see what is happening today with people having access to personal computers and phones. Right? Look at people creating skits on phones. It's a dream, it's an ideal. And people were communicating those ideas through stories. So now let's talk about social media or personal branding. And um, over, half of a consumer, over half of consumers have chosen to do business with a freelancer or company because of a strong positive online presence. I'm telling you, online life is an extension of real life. And people make decisions based on what you post or based on what you see or what you write online, people will start making judgments and will start making decisions. And this is the reason why some people want to be attached to somebody and they don't want to be attached to another person, right? So again, um, take your social media uh, you know, presence really seriously. People are Googling you at every stage of your career. So for example, you can try it now. Just Google your name and find what you, if you like what you find, good. And if you don't like it, it's also fine. You can always start building, building towards that. And it doesn't matter that people have to you know, probably publish you. I've seen places where you want to make a decision between two candidates and then people just go online. When I got my job, you know, my supervisor was like, before he was preparing for my induction, 
he said like he has googled me and he's like he was telling me one of my quotes i'm like okay interesting <laughs> you know i was like this is really really interesting that he loves what i shared in so so so, so place in so, so so place i'm like really interesting but i mean it, and if i didn't put myself out there right if i didn't publish myself people might not be able to read about my ideas they might not be able to have access to my work you might not be able to attract sponsors who will be able to speak for you behind the closed doors. There are some people who are speaking for you behind the closed doors that you don't know, but they are doing it because they have access to your story. But why, when you don't tell it, how do I want to know that this is what you do, or this is who, who you are, or this is what you stand for? So more than half of employers would hire potential candidates without some sort of online presence today. Career builder, according to career builder, the average person now switches jobs every two to three years, and 14% of the workforce will freelance. But like this is like an old statistics, right? So again, you know, uh, with, with people doing a lot of freelancing and and all, you know, you 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 like like you when you use social media more often, you, you get more opportunities. For example, I've been I've been in London for just uh, um, um, five months or six months now, and I've been trying to like crack the whole system. Like, how do I get opportunities here like to speak or to get into spaces? And it's already happening. Someone reached out to me on LinkedIn that, oh, we want, we'd like you to speak to some disadvantaged young people in, in Peckham in London. And it happened because I, tell, I, I was telling my stories, right? I, you know, I kept telling my stories and you won't do a speaking engagement here without getting paid for it, right? So like, I knew that I need to crack that system. And by that, I crack that system. And it's, 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 it's aligned with my niche, disadvantaged young people, teaching them about social change and education. I'm like, I, this is what I want. I want to be represented for what I, what I do. Education, specifically, you change, social change. I mean, like, and it's clear in the message that I put out there, basically. So uh, CEO reputation and employer attraction are now determined by personal branding. I think I will just really, really stop here because I know I'm already taking all the time, like, but there's still more things to share or more things to talk about. Um, you know, like, um, 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 I, I would probably share the slides and people can, can have access to, um, to this, basically. But I would end with, um, with um, there's no one who can tell your story better than you are. If you do not blow your trumpet, who will? And the truth is a sponsor is waiting for you to share your failure to share means they will not have access to your work. When, when opportunity arises, they have limit, when opportunity arises, they have limited information to share about you. And that is how you lose some opportunities. So your sponsor is waiting for you. So go on and share, share and share. Thank you. Thanks. Oh.